Alright, today we're going to be looking at a 1975 Kawasaki F9 350 motorcycle. This is a two stroke. Uh, I showed you in an earlier video how to pull that carb off of the, the motor and then uh, pull the cables off as well. So we've got the carburetor here and um, already have the cables off. Like I said, we showed you in that other video. We've got the choke here and the plunger and the spring are going to be in there. So the cap, the spring, and then there's a plunger. And sometimes um, if you've got the cable hooked on already, then this is obviously going to be no problem. Um, it can be a bit of a challenge. And I just wanted to stick it down in there to show you um, kind of where it went. But I may regret doing that. There we go. Pulled it out there. So that's the plunger, what it looks like there. The cable just slides in that groove there. Goes down in there, obviously, the spring. And then the cap on top of that. So we've got your idle adjust here. And there... Um, a flathead screwdriver that comes in from the side, you turn it clockwise, turns your idle up. And what that is doing is just pull it, pushing the slide up and down. So if we're turning the idle up, we're going to turn it clockwise, and you can see it raising that slide there, allowing more fuel, allowing more air, pulling more, more fuel through. So we've got your top cap here where your throttle cable comes down into. It's a threaded area there. Obviously, if we've pulled the throttle cable, we've already had this off. Um, but we spin it. This is two separate pieces here, and it's spring loaded. So just kind of keep some pressure on it so that if um, when you pull loose there, it doesn't pieces don't go everywhere. There's a O-ring seal that um, will kind of be in that spring area as well. You want to make sure that that is in good condition before going back together. Pull the spring there. Your slide will just come out. Now the throttle cable, and we didn't show you how to unhook this because that throttle cable was stuck. So that throttle cable slides down this groove, the end of it does, and hooks down in the bottom there. And then we've got um, oh the, the keeper here for it that'll kind of hold it in as well. So it holds the needle in, holds the cable in, um, and that just slides down right on top of that needle. This needle here is adjustable, so it's got, uh, looks like five different grooves you can set it in for this snap ring here. So you need more fuel flow through there, different altitude, do some performance stuff to the bike, uh, you can adjust that needle. Otherwise you stick with stock specs. In this case, it's right in the middle. So we've got your slide here as well as your needle and your spring. And we'll go back together with all this so you can see the order of everything there. Next thing we're gonna do is pull this bowl off. Now I soaked this carburetor overnight in cleaner and um, it damaged the gasket pulling it apart. There's still some corrosion in here, but this carburetor overall is, in, is going to be in working condition. You're going to want to replace the gasket. Um, it, was, it was breaking apart when I, when I got to it and um, soaked it all last night uh, overnight just to try to get it cleaned up and uh, cleaned up a lot of the corrosion, but it's still um, you know, some of that aluminum's kind of pitted in there and you can see that here when I pull this apart. We've got your fuel drain here. It's a 10 millimeter bolt that you pull out and you can just pull that out there. That fuel will drain out uh, this bottom nipple here. This nipple, you don't want it, <clears throat> that fuel draining directly onto that motor. It'll discolor the motor, take paint off or start a fire. So you want to make sure that you've got a hose that goes um, from this nipple all the way down underneath of the motor. So drain it out uh, on the ground if your bike's bouncing around the back of a uh, trailer or um, going over a jump or something. So as you can see, it's corroded, uh, but not a lot of buildup, not a lot going to come off here when I when I chisel at it. Um, this this carburetor will work. Um, if you've got some kind of a bead blaster, you can spray that and clean that up even better yet. We've got your pilot jet, and this is going to be a challenging thing for these older bikes, and it takes a really small flat screwdriver. It's clear down in that hole, there's a pilot jet, it's just a small little jet. So you want to make sure you pull that, make sure you blow through it, make sure you're getting uh, fuel throw it, flowing through it. You can see through. If you hold it up to light, you'll be able to see through that small port. If you can't see through it, then you've got problems. Um, you want to take and clean that out. We've got a pin here. This is your needle and seat. And we will... It takes a very small pair of pliers to get this out. Once you get it started, um, you can just pull it out. You want to make sure these aluminum posts here that you don't damage those when you are pulling it out. Um, some people will 
use a pick or something and just, just punch it right there. Just want to be awful careful doing that. These posts, once they break, uh, your carburetor is done for. So pull that pin out there, we'll pull the float off, and then we've got your needle and seat down below there. The needle and seat are replaceable on this model, and um, so you just take a wrench or a socket, pull that out. That's your seat there, this is your needle. You want to make sure there's no grooves in this needle, um, make sure it's no cupping on this seat here, and make sure it's in good condition. You can pull your main jet out as well, make sure you blow through that with compressed air. I use um, gum out carbon choke cleaner, seems to work the best. You can spray it down in all of these ports and make sure they're all free and clear. Take compressed air and blow through them. So take a, take a pilot jet here for instance, hold your compressed air up to it, blow through it, make sure that air is flowing through it, and make sure that's free and clear. So we've got your carburetor taken apart there. We're going to assemble it now and then show you a couple more things. So we've got your, um, this, this uh, float here has got an adjustable, uh, so you can adjust your needle height um, or your float height. And so that tab right there, you're going to be able to adjust um, up and down depending on what you're needing. You don't want to do this uh, instead of replacing your needle and seat if your needle and seat do need replaced. This would just be if, if fuels, if you're constantly having fuel dump out from the bottom, you may want to shut it slightly. Um, that way you're, you're not having as much fuel sitting in your carburetor at all times. What happens is that fuel bounces around in that carburetor and will go down this uh, port here and out your bottom nipple here. And if you've got your needle set too, too high, uh, your float set too high, your fuel will constantly be coming up and dumping out here. That's why when you set your bike on the side stand or bouncing around the trailer, fuel will be sloshed around this bottom bowl here and will go up over top of this and go down and out the bottom. So that is why it's doing that. Again, this is, uh, we're gonna need a gasket before we go completely back together. I just wanted to show you how to do that. This pilot jet here, they're a, they're a brass jet. You wanna make sure you don't torque this down an incredible amount so the next person can get it out. If your bike is hard starting, I'd start with that pilot jet. That's a common problem. Those ports are so small that they get plugged up very easily. A piece of sand that was in the fuel tank or um, bad fuel, piece of sand that was in the fuel um, line or, or worked its way in through the fuel line would go down into, could potentially go down to that pilot jet and um, plug it up. So if you've got a hard time starting the bike, uh, that may be the first place you check. So we've got your fuel in on this side and um, again, your idle screw here, choke here and putting your top cap back on. Uh, I'll show you how to do that. This uh, needle here and then slide can only go down one direction. Um, it'll get started the other way, but it won't go very far. So make sure that you've got a little pin on this side here. Make sure that goes in that groove there. So you may have to slide around a little bit till it gets there. You want this slide to move up and down freely with no snags. Again, it's spring loaded, so you're gonna, it's gonna take a little bit of pressure. But we've got this cap here with an O-ring. Now what I like to do, that O-ring is grooved there, so set it right down into that cap in that groove, and then that groove is gonna go on that groove on the carburetor. So I like to take, get it in a ballpark idea. Not that it really matters because you're gonna spin it right now anyways. And now I like to find this spot where it sits down in there, keep pressure on it, and then turn this cap all the way down. Now we slide that choke cable uh, slide the cap, slide the spring, and then take the choke plunger here, put the bottom in there, slide it in there. So now all this will be on your throttle or your choke cable, and then you take and slide it down in there. I don't have the choke cable to show you, otherwise I'd do it that way. This is the carburetor on a 1975 Kawasaki F9 motorcycle.